Good morning, dear brothers and sisters. Welcome to our celebration of the Holy Eucharist on this, the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our Mass this morning is being offered for the repose of the souls of Seferino, Anibasant, Natalia, Vitaliana, Leticia, Remenhilda, Gaspar, and Nabucodonosor. The Mass is also being offered for the speedy recovery of James. And last but not the least, is offered in thanksgiving for blessings. If your hand should cause you to sin, cut it off. Jesus is not legitimizing the practice of self-mutilation. He was using what we may call a hyperbole, an exaggeration in order to emphasize a point. The point Jesus wanted to emphasize was that we must be radical in removing any occasion of sin, thus impressing with us the evil of sin. Sometimes we say that we are sorry for having committed a sin, but the true test of our sorrow is our decision not to sin. One sign that we really do not want to sin again is to get rid of whatever was the cause or the proximate occasion of our sin. For example, if we keep certain pictures or readings that have caused us to sin, then we should get rid of them. Otherwise, they may be a source of temptation and we would not really be determined to avoid the sin. This morning, it is a blessing and a grace that we have His Excellency, the Archbishop Marek Zelowski, the non-resident pontifical representative to Vietnam, presiding over our Mass, and consolidating with him our fathers Joseph, Father John Baptist Min, and Father Peter Can. Let us now all stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Eucharist. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promise heirs to treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Numbers. The Lord came down in a cloud and spoke to Moses. Taking some of the spirit that was on Moses, the Lord bestowed it on the 70 elders. And as the spirit came to rest on them, they prophesied. Now two men, one named Eldad and the other Medad, were not in the gathering, but had been left in the camp. They too had been on the list, but had not gone out to the tent. Yet the Spirit came to rest on them also, and they prophesied in the camp. So when a young man quickly told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp, Joshua, son of Nun, who from his youth had been Moses' aid, said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses answered him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the people of the Lord were prophets. Would that the Lord might bestow his spirit upon them all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. James. Come now, you rich, weep and wail over your impending miseries. Your wealth has rotted away. Your clothes have become moth eaten. Your gold and silver have corroded, and that corrosion will be a testimony against you. It will devour your flesh like a fire. You have stored up treasure for the last days. Behold, the wages you withheld from the workers who harvested your fields are crying aloud. And the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on earth in luxury and pleasure. You have fattened your hearts for the day of slaughter. You have condemned, you have murdered the righteous one. He offers you no resistance. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. Jesus replied, Do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great milestone were put around his neck and he was thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life, ma'am, that with two hands to go into Gehenna, into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than with two feet, to be thrown into Gehenna. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the Gehenna, where the worms does not die and the fire is not quenched. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, before I start my comments, my homily on the, today's readings, I would like to express my gratitude to His Holiness Pope Francis for appointing me as his representative to this country, to Vietnam. I'm very grateful, very honored for this privilege and also big responsibility. If you like to know a little more about me, uh, I have been appointed last May, a few months ago, as Apostolic Nuncio to Singapore and not resident uh, Apostolic Delegate or Pontifical Representative to Vietnam. So my residence, my office are in, in Singapore, but I will be flying very often to Vietnam. Also because, as you know, Vietnam has very strong, big and young Catholic community. Many dioceses, many bishops, hundreds, thousands of priests and sisters. So I try to be present as often as possible also among you especially here in Saigon. A few moments ago, we have heard that Jesus said, whoever is not against us is for us. It is a little mysterious language and not easy to interpret. What does this Bible passage mean? Are we to understand that Jesus is saying that he is tolerant of those who minister in his holy name apart from his association, apart of the Catholic Church? Uh, have we considered all religious religions equal, or all religious groups at the same level? Or we have to make distinction. Surely I cannot give you the answer today, but I would like to offer you some consideration. If we interpret the Holy Scripture literally, as uh, we used to say, according the principle sola scriptura, so uh, the strict interpretation of what is written, very easy we can commit a mistake. You have heard in the Gospel, if you I is obstacle for you, is a cause, sin, take it off. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Shall we apply these principles literally? Obviously not. Although, even today, some of the religious groups, they think that way. The Gospel says us something else. We have to remove from our lives all that is bad, immoral. We have to remove from our hearts all that causes us to sin. All things that are not pleased to God. The message of today's Gospel is the spiritual message. We never interpret the Bible literally. It's not a historical book, it's not a scientific book. The Bible has very special uh, message to deliver to us. The Bible is the Word of God translated, if I can say like this in human language. It's the revelation. God speaks to us through the Bible. But in the Bible, uh, the authors, 
they are using very often human examples, examples from the society, examples of the social life to, of 2,000 years ago, or even before Christ, more than 2,000 years ago, like example of Moses, who uh, appointed 70 people responsible for guiding the uh, assembly of believers at that time, the people of God. But as you see, two of them were not belonging to the group, but although they prophesied. At the same similar example we have in the Gospel. Jesus appointed also 70 disciples to help apostles to spread the good news. These are official group. And somebody else, as we have heard, tried to cast out the demons. And in both cases, the disciples of Moses and the disciples of Jesus Christ, they were a little jealous. Why somebody who is not belonging to us try to do the good things? And Moses and Jesus permitted them to operate, telling that if somebody is not against us, is with us. At the same principle we apply today for the church. Obviously, the Catholic Church, we have apostolic succession, we have sacraments, our bishops, priests are ordained according to the tradition and the law of the church. So in the Catholic Church, we have fullness of salvation. But we don't have uh, to disrespect or criticize the other religious groups, although they don't have the fullness of redemption. A few years ago, the Vatican released a theological document called Dominus Jesus, and its purpose was to correct all these theologians, catechists, sometimes priests and bishops, who were distorting the true meaning of the spirit of ecumenism. Ecumenism, interreligious dialogue, doesn't mean that everyone is equal. In that document, in Dominus Jesus, the Catholic Church rejected pluralism that implies that all religions are equal. And this is traditional doctrine of the Catholic Church. We don't have to be scandalized. It's not to criticize anyone, but just to uh, reveal to us, to Catholics, to the faithful, the truth, the truth about our history, about our teaching, the truth about Catholic Church. And before, the Church was very clear. The Latin expression was the following, extra ecclesia nulla salus. Outside the Church, there is no salvation. Today, maybe we use less this very strong and clear expression, but the teaching is still the same because cannot be the fullness of salvation in the religious groups that they don't respect sacrament, they don't have valid ordination of priests, even somebody thinks that they don't need of priests and bishops in the church. They, they have like spiritual leaders, they don't know the Bible very often. I met also in my uh, diplomatic career the Christians groups, Christians inverted commas, they say that they don't need to read the Bible even. So which kind of Christians are they? They don't know Jesus Christ, they don't know Bible, they'll criticize continuously Catholic Church, they are jealous maybe, and they call themselves Christians. Can we put these groups at the same level as Catholic Church or the other traditional churches? that respect the tradition, they, that have the roots coming back to the time of the apostles? Obviously not. And then for us Catholics, we have to remember always that we have the Pope, the Holy Father, who is successor of St. Peter. Because Jesus Christ didn't give authority, special authority to all apostles. 
he has chosen one only, St. Peter, as a person, as a concrete man, and told him, you are the Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And the Peter was, as you know, the Bishop of Rome, and this tradition we continue. We have the Pope, not because we invented something, but because the Pope is the Bishop of Rome, successors of one of the many successors of St. Peter. If you travel to Rome and you visit the Basilica of Lateran, the Basilic Lateranensis Basilic, you will see on a certain level, on the like uh, first floor, the old portrait of the popes, the images of the popes. And there were many from the beginning of the church. 263 or 64 today, all around the church, going around the church, you can see each face of, of the Pope. That means we still keep the same tradition, in interrupted apostolic succession, which is very important to know for us, also for our discussions, also to know how to reply somebody who is affirming that the, all religious groups are the same. So, dear brothers and sisters, this week <coughs> let us reflect upon our position towards the Lord Jesus and His Church that He has instituted on earth. Are we with Jesus or we are against Him? Are we with the teaching of Jesus that are found in the Holy Catholic Church? or we don't accept it. They are fundamental questions to describe our Catholic identity. If we seek with all our souls, our minds and our bodies and our strength to humbly serve and obey the Lord Jesus in the body of Christ by shining as a light in the world, then we truly enjoy the hope that leads to eternal joy and peace in the kingdom of God, such awaiting those who receive their salvation through Christ. Amen. We profess now our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, heaven and earth. I believe into heaven and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy And the life of the world to come. Dear brothers and sisters, we pray now to God the Father for enlightenment as we bring the needs of our broken and divided world before Him. 
We pray for peace and harmony in the church so that the gospel may be preached more effectively. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of forgiveness and reconciliation and the healing of hurts caused by division and bickering, let us pray to the Lord. For a greater appreciation of the goodness of people as a channel of God's Spirit at work in the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the old, the lonely, and the handicapped, and the sick. We ask God to strengthen them with the warmth of His presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our friends who have died and have gone before us, may they share in the peace and happiness of God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause in silence to pray for those who have asked for prayers and for other personal intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, help us to see all people through your eyes. Grant us the breath of mind and generosity of heart to accept what is good from whatever source. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the God Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be led open before us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that, by sinning, we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim the death of Lord and of His resurrection until You come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant and Pope, our Pope Francis, and our Bishop, the Order of Bishop, all the clergy, and the, and the entire people you have again it for your all, listen graces to prayer of this family, whom you have summoned before you in your compassion or mercy, Father, gather to yourself on your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasant to you at their passing from this life, give a kind admittance to your kingdom that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of us now forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirits. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
<clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy as you stand and my will. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
will bless the Lord at all times. His praise ever in my mouth. My soul shall glory in the Lord, and the lowly will hear me and be
Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. <laughs>